So welcome to part one of managing voles. Um, I'm going to talk to you about some physical barriers, managing vole habitat, um, as well as some repellents and things for voles. So um, if you want to check out some other things, check out part two and you'll see what's going on in that video. So this video is for anybody that does cover crops on their property um, and anybody that's doing regenerative and organic methods. Make sure you stick around to the end. This is going to be a multi-part video as well. Um, check out the other parts and you'll see a list of plants um, that are either known to or um, have been seen in uh, research or through anecdote to possibly repel voles. Um, so make sure you stick around and enjoy the video. So I was leaving my property one day and I just looked over and saw that this tree had just kind of killed over, right? Um, it just fell over and m roots and things were missing from it. So it was these voles that are going in after and eating the roots. And so especially if you're keeping apple trees, they really like the way that the apple rootstock tastes. So make sure that you institute some of these measures that we're about to talk about. So cover cropping. Whenever you cover crop, you create some ideal conditions for voles. Um, especially if you let the grass get too tall. Um, it, so moles especially like to eat grass and clover. So we're using crimson clover on this property and that has actually possibly attracted voles. Um, so that was some information that I didn't see anywhere um, doing the research about voles um, that that could possibly happen. So um, early signs of voles are plants that you have that are missing their roots. Um, so if you see like little tunnels and things underneath the bottom of plants and their plants just suddenly die and they have no root, um, that's a possible indication that you have voles. Also, if you can walk around your property and you feel kind of spongy soil give way under your feet, those are likely to fold tunnels. Differences between moles and voles, um, your moles have wider paddle kind of feet. Um, and then some other differences between your moles and your voles. Um, your, mole, your voles look a little more like mice. Um, they have shorter tails than mice do. So if it's got a nice long tail, about two thirds the length of the body, it's probably a mouse. But then if you've got a, little, a much shorter tail, maybe about half the length to a quarter length of the body, you're looking at possibly a vole, okay? Also, your voles are gonna eat your plant roots. Um, they're vegetarians. Moles are carnivores, so they're going to be eating more meat, so um, grubs and worms and insects and things. So this is year two of cover cropping for us. Um, keep an eye out for those signs of old damage that I mentioned before, because at the early signs of that, you want to start using some of these methods that I'm going to go over with you with um, to start trying to control their population, because they are rodents, they do multiply quickly, and they absolutely will cause problems for you. So the first thing you can do is create a physical barrier. So get some quarter inch wire mesh, put it about 18 to 24 inches up your tree, and that'll help prevent your tree from, um, from getting what's called girdled or girdling to where rodents come in and chew around uh, the bark all the way around the tree. And if they get into that cambium layer, that cambium layer is a layer that helps to provide nutrients to the upper part of your tree, and that can cause significant damage and or dieback on your tree. So make sure to use um, some kind of a physical barrier, especially on young trees. And I don't have one yet. I'm going to get some made um, and put it around these trees as well, because come to find out, I thought that voles didn't mess with older trees. But unfortunately, they do. <laughs> as you can see from the apple tree I showed you earlier, um, they will mess with older trees. So there were the things whenever I was doing research on these fruit trees that said that voles really only mess with younger trees but that is not true. They will mess with some of these older trees as well and can cause damage to them as well. Um, that will prevent fruiting for you um, this coming year. So make sure you take care of that. Number two, make sure you help to manage the vole habitat. So you can create some plant-free zones around your trees to discourage voles from living near their root systems to help prevent damage to them. And then also, um, if you're growing any cover crops, keep it mowed down to three to six inches. Um, that three to six inch height will help to expose them to predators and help to reduce their populations that way. So number three, use repellents. So blood meal, capsaicin, castor oil, and coyote urine have all shown um, in certain studies at higher concentrations that they can help to repel voles. Also, foods with quercetin, um, which is in um, apples and honey and raspberries, and red onions, not red onions, red grapes and onions, 
um, those things um, can help to um, cause toxicity and reduce growth in voles. Food plants with tannic acid, so tarragon, thyme, vanilla, cumin, um, those plants also cause um, toxicity and reduce uh, growth in voles. Um, if you want to check out some other things, check out part two and you'll see what's going on in that video. So take a look at the list of uh, references and things down below. Um, I wanted to share with you the research and stuff that I did with um, putting this video together.